Safi Siege event is still hanging around, but with limited time available to play for most people, I feel like there's some variations you should definitely focus on. This may be because we lack an elite option in the specific status or element, or there's just an absolute need to upgrade. Regardless of reasoning, let's go ahead and start with the Safi Horns I recommend you make before the event is over. When it comes to our Fire Horns, they're a bit weaker than the best options that we have for the other elements. The Glavinous Horn is by no means terrible, but it's definitely not stronger than the other options that we have in other elements. You then look to the Antonath Horn, and it has a great amount of fire damage, but then when you look to the raw attack, negative affinity, lack of decoration slots, and the song set itself, it's clearly not a great option. And finally we come to the horn that gives me so much angst and makes my blood boil each time I scroll by it, the Gold Rathian horn. The attack isn't bad, the affinity is great, but Capcom clearly made it fit outside the parameters of other elite horns when it comes to damage. And they did this with a weapon tree that, for other weapon classes, was the best options when they came out, but I digress. The TLDR of it all is that there really isn't a fire horn option that blows you out of the water, but we can very easily change that with the Safi horns. For the Safi fire horn, I went with the straight element infused version. Right now I have an attack melody from the recommendation of Jinx and Tuna, and I started out wanting to make this an anti Kirin horn, but I couldn't bring myself to do it in the end. The end result is this horn, on the training pool alone, doing some serious damage. Doing somewhere around 136 per spin tick with this weapon is pretty satisfying. The fire damage on this is going to scale well with 3 star weak monsters, and it definitely shows. Speaking of that fire damage, in using this fire Safi horn, I went with the silver Rathalos set to get even more out of it for that true crit bonus. You throw in that best in slot Garuga legs with even an incomplete blaze charm on my end, and you're looking at some very good damage with that true crit while we are still able to provide that juicy attack up XL to our teammates who most likely are focusing on getting the most DPS as well. Something that is going to be apparent is that this does not currently have purple sharpness. I'm waiting to see how some of the numbers check out and see just how much that would play in terms of loss or gain. Regardless, if people were wanting to go the way of purple sharpness, grinding out a single sharpness 5 would not be very hard to do. Using this, even without any attack augments, it clearly outdoes the fire options we have available. Fire is one of the weaker categories, so I would potentially put this as the number one on your to-do list. As far as all ailments negated horns go, we have a pretty meh field in terms of damage. We have a horn that saw quite a bit of usage out of me, even though it wasn't a damage heavy horn. The Nyx 2. Having that all ailments negated song in ruiner levels of comfy white sharpness made this a horn I frequented, but if we're talking about doing solid damage while putting monsters to sleep, this just wasn't going to cut it. The Rodaban horn is just a crazy mixed bag of sleep status with an element boost song and some pretty low attack from the get go. The Ogre Bite is one that could be much more viable if it wasn't handicapped by the fact that we have a negative 30% affinity right off the bat and having to wake up that sleep status in the first place. Then we talk about the Teostra horn, and it's pretty lacking when it comes to damage and doesn't have the most generous levels of sharpness either. For my all ailments Safi horn, I straight up hooked this thing up with nothing but attack upgrades to give it that extra bit of edge. I know what you're probably looking at, and it's most likely that sleep status. I've been playing around with this for a bit and can't decide if I'm going with the abnormal status on my blast or my sleep horn. Nyx 2 is a horn that is near and dear to my heart. All ailments negated carried me through a lot of tough fights when I was making my way through Master Rank, so if I threw Abnormal Melody on either one, I'll either be throwing Nyx or Teostra into obscurity, because that's what the Safi horns were designed to do. They were designed to be the weapons we use for some time to come, and that's a direct quote. So this is more of a personal preference whether you decide to go Sleep or Blast, to straight up replace Nyx or Teostra with Abnormal Melody. As far as the set goes, I use it with this. You have a lot more flexibility with status horns in my opinion. I don't usually go with true crit status because I think the one or two more ailments you get out of them and the amount you have to invest on the status itself gets outweighed by the potential DPS or even comfort you lose by doing so. I went with the typical Master's Touch, Garuga Legs, and Brute Chest for this but I focused on the usual crit eye, boost, and exploit, but tossed in some attack for the heck of it. 
along with some part breaker, which is incredible for Safi. I'm not kidding when I say I'm going to have a hard time choosing between the Sleep or Blast Horn, and if I have to be honest, I probably won't come to a final conclusion till the last night of the event. But all ailments, horns is another obvious category where we have a lack of standout options for attack. Whether I go with sleep or blast, this will be the all elements horn that I would use for sure. We hop back to another element, but in this case, we do have an option that's pretty solid in the austere paradise. As much as I love that horn, there clearly are some holes in it that can be plugged to make it better than what it is now. We all know the story with the Stygian Zenogar horn, and the fact that they gave it an element attack boost song with a pretty lame amount of dragon element. The dragon bone horn is actually a surprising adept option and an excellent counter to everyone's favorite party crasher, the Savage Devil Joe. Runer is a great comfy option, but with low dragon element and no attack up song, it can easily be outpaced damage wise. But back to the holes in Austere Paradise. Right off the bat, that nice dragon element requires some pretty decent real estate to wake up, and when you look to the song set, it is stuck at attack up L and can't reach XL, even though its starting raw is pretty solid. With my Safi Dragon Horn, I feel as if I built the Stygian Zenogar Horn that we deserved or felt entitled to, whatever side of that boat you're on. I cranked this thing up with Element to really give it that Howling Dragon Lightning Beast effect. As per with the Fire Safi Horn, I went with an Attack Melody, but this bad boy gets the Attack Melody 4, or the Acidic Lavinous song set. With this horn, we jump back to the Silver Rathalos setup. It's truly just a mirror image of the set used for the Fire Safi Horn, but with the Dragon Attack Charm and a Dragon Deco instead of a Blaze one. The difference here is that I have a finished Dragon Charm and an Attack Augment and an Element Augment already on this horn. As you can see from the video, this horn can absolutely smack when it comes to damage. This isn't even fully fleshed out, and it's hitting the training pool for a nice 142 per tick. Can you imagine what it will do to a 3 star weak monster? And that 552 with the 3 times dragon wave encore? Could you imagine waking up to that? As I said before, the austere paradise for me is the front runner in terms of dragon horns, but with that being said, there are holes that are absolutely filled with the Safi dragon horn. You lose the weak link of having to wake up the dragon element and end up with more from the get-go. You also gain an attack up XL buff instead of peaking at attack L. There's no ridiculously high negative affinity to deal with like the Fate Dirge either. You get a head start with this one in fact. For the foreseeable future, this horn will be my go-to in dragon situations. Now this isn't an end-all be-all horn because in dragon resistant monsters like Gold and Silver Rathian, you're going to obviously see a pretty steep fall off with this horn. But if you're a monster on the opposite end of that spectrum, Good luck. Now we jump back into the status portion of this video and we land on the paralysis horns. The selection here is definitely good. The only weakness is that we still have to invest real estate in waking up the status. We all know what the Rasping Ballad, aka the Acidic Glavinous Horn can do, but when you want to turn it into a paralysis horn, you have to throw in that element wake up skill. The same goes for the thoroughly underrated Sforzondo Horn that also requires some wake up for the status. The Queen's Flute on the other hand has great paralysis that you don't have to wake up, but it lacks that powerful punch the former mentioned horns can easily give you. We solve this by taking up a Safi Paralysis Horn, jacking it up with attack, and giving it an attack melody for XL. You don't have to use Elementless, and you don't have to use the wake up skill to get that status out. If you want to invest in some status upgrades, you can, but I wouldn't really bother doing so in my opinion. In a similar fashion to the Sleep Horn, we have a lot of freedom set wise. It's the same Master's Touch, Garuga Legs, and Brute Chest, but instead of Part Breaker, let's say screw it and toss in some Evade Extender to jump out of the way of the ground explosions coming at us throughout the Safi Siege. Depending on how you feel about true crit status or building your status up higher, your set could look pretty different. But as I said before, I'm not much for it. This horn still smacks, doing a solid 116 per tick on a spin, and you add in the fact that you can easily hit 100% affinity with these horns, and the Master's Touch will keep you sitting pretty through the fight at sharpness level white. Toss in the idea of having monsters paralyzed a few times during the fight, and you have a very capable and status ready horn if that's the route you like to go. Poison horns operate on a pretty short list of viable options damage wise. You pretty much have the Wolf Shamisen as the lone viable option. I know the Detura horn is a cult classic amongst some horn users, but they'll surely never 
try to tell you the horn blows them out of the water when it comes to smacking the monsters around. And don't even talk to me about the cry in the night. I love the design of that thing, but it's a dumpster fire when you talk about viability of actually using it. With the poison Safi horn, we can finally get what the gold Rathian weapons were in most of the other weapon categories. A weapon that does solid damage and gives us that sweet comfort of having poison tick away at a monster's health. This one is a pretty much straight up attack infused horn with an attack melody, but for this one, I took a little bit of a different route. I wanted to take more of a support route in select categories. For one, I took attack melody 2, the basil song set, to give us the recovery speed and extended health recovery passive healing for the group. Second, I used one of the upgrade slots to slot in a Tigrix Essence and give us a point towards that free meal secret I love using to support. With that in mind, I went ahead and grabbed the usual Master's Touch pieces, but instead of just the Brute Chest, I also threw in Brute Legs to give the Teostra and Tigrix bonuses. This gives me solid, respectable damage, some poison to do some dots, max comfort with Master's Touch, and an abundance of items to heal my party through the Safi fight. Even the newest of new players, players that just refuse to heal themselves, or people that just get caught in some bad luck, aka all of us. While this horn isn't going to deal insane amounts of damage like the dragon horn I previously talked about, in the end, if you're not the smoothest of players, or you like feeling comfy, this could very well be the route for you to take. Or maybe you just want to be the ultimate buffer and keep your party alive throughout your hunts. Either way, or either reason, you can do so while still doing a very respectable amount of damage in the process. So there you have it. Some horn ideas to really give you an idea of how to get the most out of the Safi Siege, especially if you're limited on time. I'll definitely have videos coming out testing these horns out specifically on monsters that aren't Safi, but I wanted to get this video out with some decent time still left in the event. I still stand by what I said in that you should definitely consider making a horn for every status and element, but if you can't, the ones I mentioned would be a good place to start. If you told me I could only make one, it would most likely be the fire or dragon horns but go about it in whatever direction you want. If you like an element or status I didn't focus on, go for it. It's all about having fun and maxing out enjoyment, not just DPS. I want to give an absolute huge shout out to my first patron, Alan R. Thank you for taking a chance on me and giving me the extra inspiration to make videos like these. This is something I'll definitely remember forever. If you liked the video, please do let me know with a thumbs up. Comment down below what your chosen horn is or will be. Subscribe if you haven't already for more Iceborne and hunting horn content. Dudes forever, have a good night, and happy hunting.